It's my pleasure to introduce Steve Scafidi, who's going to read next. Um, he's got some great books, but an amazing poet and an amazing friend who I, I uh, had the pleasure of meeting through correspondence, through mail. He's one of the best letter writers I know, and for that and for his poems, I love him. And let's welcome Steve Scafidi. Thank you very much. Curtis is, is an extraordinary literary writer. And speaking of like superlatives, um, I'm not, an, I'm not an, an incredible human being. Other people are. I'm a, re I'm a regular kind. Like within the last five minutes since I've been here, I spilled my water bottle on my chair and then I sat on it. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a beautiful blonde woman over there and I, I stepped on her nearly naked foot with my big boot. So I apologize to you. Um, I'm a regular. Regular <laughs> um, Anyway, I'm just going to read two poems and sit down. And, uh, but it is, it's an honor to be here and uh, to share your company tonight. Um, anyway, I want to read a poem uh, uh, by um, Philip, of, uh, Philip of Thessalonica, written about 100 AD. Uh, and it's translated uh, by Sherrod Santos, the great American Sherrod Santos. Um, uh, it's a book, it's a poem uh, that reminds me of, of what's going on. It has, it's a poem that has a body floating in it, uh, like uh, our seas often seem to have bodies in them more than usual. So this has been going on a long time. I thought I would just read this old, old poem called Corpse. Can you all hear me? Yes. Corpse. Tell me, how can we possibly call this mess a man's remains. Broken up like an urn as the blunt waves hurled him time and again against the seawall's jagged rock. Here lies his hairless head with all the teeth knocked out. And there, five fingers of a chewed off hand. The birdcage of his unfleshed ribs, a foot without strappings. And a leg that's so disjointed you could fold it like an easel into threes. Are we to believe these random bits composed one thing, that we call that thing a man? Blessed are those, I tell you, who were never born to see the sun rise from its bloodshot grave. That's the curse I was going to read tonight. And I'm going to read a blessing next. Because I think, um, I think of the imagination as my beloved in some ways, or the beloved, and, and so I'm never alone in that way, which is my, my luck, I think. And, um, but I like to think that that person in the sea was someone's beloved, and uh, certainly the poet's beloved. So uh, I want to read a poem about a, a beloved of mine. My daughter is here. She's fifth, just turned 15. She got her braces off today. <laughs> Absolutely. So her name is Izzy, and I wrote this uh, when she was just born. It's called, um, To My Infant Child on a Winter Night. On the night you were conceived, some divine hand appeared, and now look at the magical starry fist coming toward us, like an asteroid, icy and terrible in the night sky. Little fig, little onion-headed something bundled in my arms, Look to where your father reaches up to the sky, pointing. So we're all going to die. A big whoop. You just gaze up from the swaddling of my arms and hiccup suddenly, and you do not cry. For such eloquence, you are beloved, and you should know that the beloved are marked, and loss is like breath when one is marked. For we will not die by what comes at us wild suddenly from the midnight sky. And we will not die from words or what shines from a father's mind. And yet we will, little drifter into dream, like our family before us, die of old age in the chemicals and drinking water. And from the wearing down of bone, joy eventually turns out to be. For such is the burden of the beloved, who arrive astonished, falling from our mother's bodies. I hope you learn to take the pointed counsel of the horsefly and the bumblebee in your father's mind one day soon and learn to sting the fat ass of the world 
that wants us dead, buried quietly in the world's grief. And I hope you learn to lean into whatever comes at you and learn to take it and to take it on. Remember the great fighter Muhammad Ali outsmarted George Foreman in 1974 by taking punch after punch one night in Zaire. And so, when your sorrow comes, take it. Rope-a-dope loss and break it. Child, do this, watch. Make a small, tight fist and shake it at the sky. The night is an idiot and blind, bigger than your mother and I, and we defy it with you. And this, is real, and this is really no way to welcome you to the shimmering lilac of being here. But talking like this is all I know. Just a moment ago, under the winter sky, <clears throat> you put your whole left hand right in my mouth and laughed. And whatever hurdles from the sky now hurdles still, and we will take it. Garbanzo of the beautiful, gazing up and looking at the world. I love how you hiccup quietly and stare how you laugh when I joggle you in my arms and growl gently like a bear.